Hi, and welcome to the first installment of Lantai Teo Tries Long Form Content. Today's video is going to be a longer synopsis of the marine intake for the 4.3 Vortec. Now, before we actually talk about the marine intake, we have to first discuss the stock intake that comes with the 4.3 Vortec. Now, if you've seen my TikTok about that intake, you know that I made some mistakes and had to make some corrections. So when GM first introduced fuel injection for the 4.3s, they introduced it as throttle body injection, which basically just injected fuel into the throttle body and that dispersed it throughout the manifold and into the engine. So after throttle body injection, they switched to CPFI, which is central port fuel injection, which is a form of spider injection. Looks like this. I mistakenly called it true multi-port fuel injection. My TikTok, that is absolutely wrong, it is a form of spider injection. After CPFI, they switched to what they call spider injection, which is, as you can see, the same thing, just updated and a little bit better. And then I believe in the 2000s, they switched to an even newer spider injection, which is still called spider injection, but it still sucked. So why am I talking about spider injection and why do I not like it? Well, let's look inside this manifold. This is the stock intake manifold for my 2008 4.3 Vortec that I'm going to swap into my S10. Taken off the top here, this top half is plastic and the lower half is cast aluminum. So even though the spider injection is a returnless style, if you look on the back in the B-roll, you can see there is another fuel pressure regulator of sorts, and that's just responsible for splitting that one single fuel source into six and making sure they have equal pressure. So you have one main pressurized area, and then these six injectors aren't actually injectors, they're just poppet valves. If you don't know what poppet valves are, I don't know how to explain them the best way, so I'm just gonna let you know they're not injectors, and they're not as good as injectors. That's all you need to know. So why do I dislike the spider injection system so much? Well, one of the simple answers is number one, they're not true injectors, so they're a little bit weirder to tune. And number two would be that there is very little aftermarket support for the spider injection system. I believe there is a company based out of Arizona called AUS Technology that makes upgraded versions of the spider injection. Uh, they make like a 32 pound per hour, a 48, and like a 58. I'm going off the cuff on this one, so if the numbers are wrong, they're going to be right here. Now, if you go with AUS technology, not only are you going to spend a premium price, you're also going to still deal with spider injection. Another way that people have gotten more fuel out of the stock spider injection is ripping the little caps off the end, which does work for turboing a 4.3 and getting extra fuel but it's not the best way to do it, and it's definitely not the right way to do it, so I tried to avoid that. So in conclusion, I don't like spider injection because it's just a weird system, and there's not a lot of aftermarket support. With all that out of the way, now we can talk about the marine intake, but before I grab that really quick, we should note that my 2008 intake manifold uses a drive-by-wire 4-bolt 76mm throttle body, and we'll talk about why that's important later. Now we get to talk about this 60-pound boat anchor of an intake manifold. So this is the marine intake manifold that came on Mercruiser 4.3 Vortec engines. In my TikTok, I said Mercruiser, and I got cooked because it's not a horse. So with this manifold, the first thing you notice is that it's really heavy. That's right, this thing weighs about 58 pounds as compared to like, I think it's like the 25 that that stock one is. That's because the entire bottom of this is cast iron, and that this upper area is cast aluminum. The second thing you'll notice is that this runs a return style fuel system instead of the return list that comes stock in my 2008 intake manifold. Now this is great because my S10 has already plumbed for a return style fuel system and of course this fuel rail allows you to run standard EV6 style injectors which if I'm not mistaken are the exact same injectors that an LS runs which means you're going to find these injectors anywhere and everywhere. Now the manifold does come stock with 24 pound per hour injectors, which should in theory run your 4.3 without a tune. Obviously you should tune it, but in theory, running the stock ones that come with this, you shouldn't have to tune it, just crank your engine over and it should be fine. I'll also mention that the fuel pressure regular that comes with this is also really easy to find. I believe it's the same one as the 1997 and 1998 Corvette. Don't quote me on that but you can find them on eBay and you can also find an adjustable version. So if you don't like the stock 58 PSI that the fuel rails run at, you can get an adjustable one and turn that down. Also, there is an AN fitting right here on this fuel rail that you can get an adapter to NPT and get a fuel pressure gauge so you know what pressure your fuel rails are at. And then obviously you've got your ports for your EV6 injectors. You got some protectors that I painted and some vacuum ports and various fittings. So how do you get 
a marine intake manifold to work on a truck engine. Well, technically there's only one thing you really need to change to get this to work, and that is this map sensor. Now, although visually identical to the one that comes in the truck manifold, the marine uh, map sensor does not read the same through your OS. So you need to swap this one for the one that comes stock in your truck manifold. Now, once that's swapped, in theory, your engine should run this manifold fine, given that you have the right throttle body. But there are safety concerns like brakes and cooling that you probably should figure out. First, let's tackle brakes and boost reference. This comes with two boost line references. The first being an eighth inch fitting and the second being a three eighths fitting. Now your three eighths is technically too small for your brake booster. So what you really should do is drill one of these circles, preferably the larger one, drill that out for a half inch NPT fitting and hook up your brake booster there. Run your regular vacuum reference off of your eighth inch fitting and then figure out what to do with the three eighths. You can either plug that or utilize it for a different boost reference. Or if you're feeling real squirrely, you can use that three eighths fitting for your brake booster, which in theory should be fine. But for legal reasons, I cannot recommend that. Safety concern two, cooling. So in the stock truck manifold, if you look in front of where the thermostat goes, there is a thermostat bypass for your water pump. And that solution is a little aluminum plug that was right here. I have replaced that aluminum plug with a brass 3 8 NPT to, I believe, 3 quarter inch fitting for a hose. Now, technically, the hose size for the water pump is 5 8 I did grab the wrong size because I wasn't thinking, but 3 quarter inch will, in theory, work, but I would recommend going with 5 8 because it actually matches the size of your water pump hose. I should also mention that you have to steal this hose fitting off of the truck manifold and put it into the marine intake manifold. They are the same thread, so it's literally just undo it, put some pipe dip on there, screw it in. You'll also notice this brass plug off to the side. That is for your PCV system. I have no idea what special thread this plug is. The only way to switch that to NPT would be to drill a hole in the plug and tap it and then put your PCV for that. But I will also say that this is only for an NA application. If you run boosted and run your PCV directly to your manifold, it's going to be pressurized and your PCV is not going to work at all. If you want more information on that, go look up how a PCV system works in a turboed engine. Now that we've got safety concerns solved, we're going to switch from things that just come standard in your marine intake manifold, things I had to change in mind personally to perfectly fit my use case. First things first, the top half, the aluminum part of the cast iron manifold. If you'll look, this one is machined to fit a four bolt drive by wire throttle body which is perfect because my truck runs off of drive-by-wire. But this intake manifold did not come with a four-bolt connection stock. It came with this three-bolt drive-by cable throttle body. Now for pre-2008 4.3s, this will work fine. It's gonna have zero issues. You hook everything up. I would actually recommend swapping your stock throttle body for this one. I think they're interchangeable, but just to be safe, use the stock throttle body that comes with your truck and bolt it into here. Now, I know you're saying, don't they make adapters that go from a 4-bolt plate to a 3-bolt hookup? Yes, they do. The only issue is, I'm going backwards. I'm going from a 3-bolt manifold to a 4-bolt hookup, and no one makes anything for that. So I had a few solutions for that. One was getting one custom machined, and I didn't want to spend that kind of money. Two was going from a 3-bolt manifold to a 4-bolt 92mm throttle body adapter, and then I'd have to buy a drive-by-wire 92mm throttle body. That seems like a lot of work that's going to mess with my intake sizing. It's kind of weird to do. I feel like it's a bit too much work. Or I can just go on eBay and do what I did, which was buy the four bolt top and throw it on there. Now, if you are using this manifold at home and you have to switch the upper part of your intake manifold, it should be noted that the fuel rails are not interchangeable. This is a three bolt throttle body fuel rail and it does not fit the four bolt throttle body intake manifold. This front piece right here is set down and that just has to do with clearances on the throttle bodies. You have to buy a different fuel rail that fits this. They're identical. This piece is just bent down. And in theory, you could bend that down yourself, but uh, I don't want to deal with that. So I ordered a new one. They're like 50 bucks. To look on the inside, we'll get some B-roll close-ups. You'll see some weird blued steel. Uh, that is where I, air quotes, ported the intake manifold. It's not actually what I did. This bottom's cast iron, so there were some hard nubs and casting marks in here that I knew I wanted to get rid of. When I opened this up to get rid of the casting marks, it had looked like someone kind of did a half-assed porting job with a die grinder. It looked really bad. I just went in there with a Dremel and a sanding drum and just smoothed stuff out that was rough. 
I didn't really port this. If I was really porting this, you'd see a lot more extreme angles and radiuses, and I was not going to deal with that. So I just simply sanded everything down, made it pretty and smooth, got rid of the crazy casting marks, and then took steel bluing compound and blued the steel so that it doesn't rust in the future. So now that I've given you an overview of my intake manifold and why I switched to it, here's some common questions that I got on the TikTok I made about this. One of the main ones was, hey, if this is so pricey, why don't you buy a carburetor intake manifold and then either carb swap your engine to run a turbo or run an EFI system? And the simple answer is <laughs> Simple answer to that is <laughs> you. That's why. <laughs> if you got a problem with that, okay. Obviously, I'm joking. Uh, I simply did this because it fits my use case the best. Look at me, lock eyes, right? This specific use case, in my opinion, this was better for me. I got a crazy screaming deal, went to the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma to get this thing. In my opinion, nuance, see, is this is better. Yes, a carb system could be a little cheaper than this manifold, but I don't know how to tune a carb very well, and I don't want to deal with tuning a carb under boost. And then on the EFI side, it's going to be the same price, if not more expensive, for a really good system in which I don't want to have to learn Holly EFI just to run this weird injection system. Also with the E38 PCM that this will run on, you get the ability to plug in a flex fuel sensor, which is pretty cool if I ever want to run E85. So in conclusion, yes, it's really heavy. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a relatively strong person and it's kind of hefty. It's nothing ridiculous. It's about 60 pounds. It is cast iron, so don't drop it. This switches to a better injection system. It's going to give you better fuel economy and it gives you a lot more freedom if you're going to use power adders like a turbo or a centrifugal supercharger. Anyways, I hope you found this somewhat informative either teaching you about this or giving you better information on why you should do the swap or why I'm doing the swap. Or if you're uh, taking a shit and you needed something to watch or listen to while you're wiping a ghost wipe, or maybe it's a, you know, one of the ones where it's like a Sharpie and it just keeps going. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like if you'd like more of this. Uh, if TikTok comes back, the TikTok might be linked in the YouTube, but I highly doubt it. But as always, if you have any critiques, go ahead and leave them down in the comment. Don't be a dick about it and have a good rest of your day. Don't they make a carbureted intake mint? Jesus Christ, did I just do the fucking anime kid thing? Oh my god. I'm just, just a middle class white boy. I don't know what they want to give a shit. Simple answer to that is fuck you. That's why. But yeah. Fuck you. Or in the case of the Holly Sniper. <sighs> oh, let's do one more.